All right. So thanks for joining me um, for All Levels Vinyasa. And I usually just say this at the beginning of each class for people practicing now with me live, but then also for anybody catching the recording later that uh, just remember that I'm the guide and it's up to you to listen to your body and honor what is right for you. So let's go ahead and start in child's pose. So go ahead and come to the shins. And knees can be together or nice and wide and let your hips start to sink back. Let your forehead rest on something. Perhaps it's the ground. If it's not the ground, then maybe it's a book or a small pillow or a block. And just start to take a few nice deep breaths in and out here. It feels good to rock your hips a little side to side just to start to kind of get into those joints a little bit more. You're welcome to do that. If those are stiff for you and that does not feel good, don't worry about it. And you can also start to gently rock your head side to side a little here. And if you're anything like you, me, you've been spending a lot more time on the computer recently. So see if you can feel your eyeballs even soften in your sockets and pull like almost towards the back of your head. As you breathe in, see if you can feel that come from your spine and the back of your body just gently expanding and lifting towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, feel that soften, feel your chest soften slightly towards the floor. Just a few more breaths like that. Unplugging from any people, places, or things that are not within the four corners of your mat. Giving yourself permission to just be present to yourself. Your next inhale, rise up to your tabletop. Bring your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. And we'll take some cats and cows here. So an inhale to lift your tailbone and top of your head, arching through your spine. Exhale to round, pressing the ground away. Pointing tailbone and top of your head down. Keep that flow going. Inhale to find the opening. Exhale to round. Inhale to open. Exhale to round. Now, if it feels good to start to take any side to side movements here, you can do that. Rock back and forth. You can do that, even to take big circles with your hips. And if you're circling, rocking it all, just make sure you get all directions so that you're even. And then coming back to neutral once you are even. Take a nice deep breath in, and as you exhale, maybe walk your hands a little further forward, tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. And maybe knees stay nice and bent for this first down dog, really thinking about lengthening where your tail would connect with your body up towards the ceiling, letting your head and neck relax, really pressing through all 10 fingertips. And maybe you can play with starting to straighten your knees, but you don't have to. You can pedal your feet here. And then Wag your tail. All right, on your next big inhale, lift your heels high. And as you exhale, lower your knees back down to your tabletop, using your core to have control. 
On your inhale, extend your right leg back. Keep your toes on the ground to start and rock back and forward a little bit, stretching through your calf. And then coming back to neutral with shoulders right over wrists, inhale to lift your right leg up and extend left arm forward. If it's too much to reach it forward, keep fingertips just slightly on the ground in front of you and breathe here. Keep drawing thigh and shoulder back in towards your spine a little and towards your hips so that you're still hugging into center even as you're reaching through toes and fingers. Good, take another nice deep breath in. Now as you exhale, release your hand down, take your right leg out towards the side. Inhale to reach your right arm up. And as you exhale, we're gonna thread it away from that extended leg. And if that's too much, you can go ahead and bring your right knee back to the ground. And breathe here. And you thread a needle. You can take that top arm and either reach it out in front of you or you can wrap it around for a half bind and breathe. And then if the top arm is moved somewhere else, bring it back in. On your inhale, begin to unwind that right arm back up high. And as you exhale, release the right hand back to the ground. Inhale to lift your right leg back up. And as you exhale, take it behind your body. Find some length through the spine. As you exhale, look over your left shoulder towards your foot. So you should feel a nice long stretch through the right side of your body. Good, keep in here. Take another nice deep breath in. As you exhale, tuck your right knee in behind your left. Walk your hands over to the right a little so that your spine is in one line. There's no curve, both sides of your body are long. Feet can either stay towards each other or for a little bit more, see if you can move feet away from each other out towards the sides. And then start to walk your hands forward, lowering your forehead and chest down towards a block or a small pillow or the floor. And breathe here. So reaching through your toes so that there's still some weight settling back towards your feet, not all forward into your chest and hands. And then you're welcome to stay right here. This may be plenty. Some days this is a great stretch for me as it is if you would like a little bit more and there's room in your body for that maybe you start to come back up and walk your hands back so it's almost like you're settling your hips on the floor or towards the floor or a book or a block between your heels and then breathe here making sure shoulders stay nice and soft and yeah you can stay sitting up taller bow forward beautiful And then slowly begin to unwind your way back to your tabletop here. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, once again, find your downward facing dog. Again, pedaling your feet if you need to or shrugging your shoulders around a little. On your next inhale, lift your heels high. And as you exhale, drop both heels over to the right. Keep lifting your hips up and back as best you can. See if you can keep weight even in your hands. And breathe here. You inhale to lift your heels back up through center. And as you exhale, drop them to the other side. And breathe.
One more breath. And inhale, bring your heels back up to center and exhale to soften them down. Inhale, look forward, rise. And as you exhale, bring your knees back to your tabletop. Inhale, extend your left leg back, keeping your toes on the ground to start and rock in and out of your heel, stretching a little through your calf, coming up through your wrist. On your next inhale, bring your shoulders back over your wrist, start to float your left leg up and then reach your right arm forward, finding spinal balance. So we don't wanna drop through the middle part of the body, keep lifting your low belly towards your spine and then keep drawing your shoulder blade and the thigh of the lifted leg back towards the, your core, kinda. And breathe, three. Two, take another nice deep breath in. As you exhale, release your hand down. Take your left leg out wide to the side. Inhale to then reach your left arm high. So same arm as leg that's extended. And as you exhale, you're gonna thread it down and away from that extended leg. Again, if that's too much, bring that extended knee back under you. And if your head can't rest, if your ear can't rest on the ground, rest it on a book or a block or a small pillow. And then top arm can extend out overhead or wrap around for a half bind and breathe here. Take your top arm back in close to you if it's somewhere else. On your next inhale, unwind your left arm back out to the side or even high. And as you exhale, release the hand down. Inhale to lift the left leg. And as you exhale, cross it then behind you. Inhale to lengthen your spine and exhale, look over your right shoulder towards your foot, finding a stretch along the left side of your body now. Breathe, good. And on your next exhale, tuck your knee in behind the other. Walk your hands over to the left a little so your spine is in one line. Both sides of your body are nice and long. Feet can either stay together or try and take them wide if you can. And then start to walk your hands forward, resting forehead and chest down towards the ground. Or again, towards a block, book, or small pillow. And then see if you can evenly distribute your weight between your hands, your forehead, and the tops of your feet, and shins and knees. And breathe here. And again, you can stay right here if this is plenty, or you can start to walk your hands back, start to bring your hips to settle on a block or a book or the floor between your heels. And then you can stay sitting up nice and tall, or you can start to bow forward. Just flex a little through your feet, don't collapse through the ankles because you want to be able to support your knees in the shape. I'm going to try and have both sits bones on the ground. Make sure you can breathe deeply. If you find yourself, if ever in any shape in this practice, you find yourself where you can't breathe, where it's hard to breathe nice and deeply, and back off a little until you can, and then work the stretch from there.
And so from here, begin to unwind your way back to your tabletop. And as you take a nice big breath in, and as you exhale, find your downward facing dog. This time on an inhale, glide forward to a plank pose by drawing armpits down your ribs towards your hips, shoulder blades down your back towards your hips. Hold here and breathe, drawing thighs back up into your low belly and hips. Three, two, one, as you exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, glide forward to your plank pose. Exhale to your down dog. Inhale, glide forward to your plank. Exhale to your down dog. One more time, inhale forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, soften, take your feet a little wider, soften your knees, hands walk back to your feet. A nice forward fold rag doll. Maybe a nice deep bend in your knees. Grab opposite elbows here. You can sway a little if that feels good or find just some small bounces. If you're ready for more shoulder stretch, you can bring your hands behind you, either grabbing a towel, strap, belt, or scarf, or interlacing your hands, and then floating your arms up and overhead. One more nice full breath in. As you exhale, release the bind. Inhale, flat back. Maybe hands come to shins, maybe knees stay soft. As you exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back again. Think about lifting armpits a little towards the ceiling to turn on upper back. Exhale, fold. One more time, inhale, flat back. Upper back muscles integrate with core muscles to help you find your long spine. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, tuck your tailbone under, roll one vertebrae at a time all the way up to stand. Once you get up, inhale to let your arms float up high. And exhale, palms draw together into heart center, thumbs resting at the center of your chest. Maybe eyes close. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale to sigh it out. So perhaps an intention or a dedication for your practice. And honor those with a deep breath in and a sigh out. Opening your eyes, inhale to reach your arms up and overhead. Now, as you reach, think about armpits drawing down and then feel your shoulder blades slide down your back and wrap just slightly towards the front of your ribs so that you should feel your low belly then naturally draw back towards your spine. So you're integrating your upper back strength with your core strength. Take one more nice full breath in here. As you exhale, bow forward. See if you can keep that sense of upper back and core working together. Inhale, flat back. As you exhale, walk your hands out, come to your plank pose. Take a nice full breath in. Now either using your knees or not, as you exhale, chaturanga, that same sense of upper back strength and core working together to keep your upper body parallel with the ground. Inhale, scoop forward, maybe a baby cobra. Maybe you're ready for up dog. And as you exhale, find your downward facing dog. Take a nice full breath in. And a nice full breath out. Take another breath in. Exhale it out. Look forward, step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, press through your feet to rise tall. 
Exhale, bow all the way down. Inhale, flat back again. Exhale, plant your hands, step or hop back. If you are hopping back, you are actually trying to land in your low plank. And inhale, find your up dog or your baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in, full breath out. One more breath in, exhale. Look forward, bring your feet to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise tall. Exhale, bow low. Inhale, nice long, light spine. Exhale, plant your hands. Step or float back your vinyasa. So that can mean building strength in high plank. It can mean using your knees for support while you build strength. It can also always mean going straight to down dog. Take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. Take one more breath in. Exhale, look forward, step or hop. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Now as you exhale, go ahead and sink your hips coming towards a chair pose. Maybe that means toe healing, big toes to touch. Thighs spiral towards each other and then down towards your mat a little bit. So outer edges of your hips release. Again, shoulder blades slide down your back and wrap towards the front of your ribs just slightly. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale here. Now on your inhale, start to float your right leg up. See if you can think about using your low belly to draw your thigh towards it. Keep your lifted foot flexed. Good, take one more full breath in. As you exhale, hinge here. Move along the midline, use your inner thighs as well as the outer edges of your legs and hips. Keep shoulder blades sliding down and wrapping slightly towards the front of your ribs to help engage your core. Take another nice deep breath in, beautiful. As you exhale, Come back to stand. Nice job. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, sink your hips towards your chair pose again. So again, turn your upper back muscles on. Let them integrate slightly with your low belly. Keep sparking energy through the tips of your fingers, tips of your toes. On your next inhale, start to lift your left knee towards your chest. Using the strength of your low belly, both thighs drawing into your hips slightly. Good. Not easy. Take another nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, move mindfully. Start to hinge and extend back. Oops, if you wobble, it's okay. But again, even though there's a sense of finding length of really reaching away from your center, you're using your strength to also draw back into center. That's where the stability comes from. Nice, take another nice full breath in. As you exhale, come back to stand. Beautiful job, inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. As you exhale, bow forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant your hands. Step or hop back, flow through your vinyasa. Take a nice full breath in, full breath out. Inhale to lift your right leg. Exhale, step your foot forward between your hands. Find a low lunge, lower your back knee down. Inhale to rise up through your chest and arms. As you exhale, maybe you inch your front foot forward, let your hips come forward and down. Just make sure that front knee isn't coming past the ankle. Take another nice deep breath in. As you exhale, drop your right hand down to your hip, or maybe it comes down to a block, a book, or the floor, and then take your left arm up and over. Side body stretch on the left side of your body. Beautiful. Uh, 
On your next inhale, come back up through center. As you exhale, go ahead and plant your left hand down on the floor or a block or book. Inhale, right arm reaches up and open, finding a twist towards that front knee. So even though you're kind of trying to draw your chest and knee towards each other, keep floating your low belly towards your spine. So it's almost like you're trying to draw your low belly away from your inner thigh. Good, maybe you tuck your back toes under, reach through that heel until the back knee lifts. Last three. Last two. Take another nice full breath in. As you exhale, release your right hand down to frame your front foot. So if your back knee is not lifted, go ahead and lift it. See if you can draw both thighs back towards your hips to help you engage your belly and square your hips off. Float your arms back behind you and start to float your chest off of your front thigh, coming into a half high lunge. Good. On your next inhale, rise up, high lunge. Beautiful. Nice. As you exhale, go ahead and open to a warrior two. You don't want back hip lifting towards the back edge of your mat. You want it drawing under, almost like your front thigh is scooping forward. Same direction as your front fingers. Good. Whip your front palm up, inhale to reverse. Don't let that top shoulder come with you. Draw it down, shoulder blades slide towards hips and wrap slightly towards the front of your ribs. Take one more nice full breath in. As you exhale, windmill your hands down to frame your front foot. Step back, blow through your vinyasa. Beautiful, take a nice full breath in, full breath out. Inhale to float your left leg up. Exhale, step it forward, low lunge. Lower your back knee down. Inhale to rise up through your chest and arms, good. So even as you inch your front foot forward, and let your hips come forward and down, you don't wanna drop into your low back. You're still squeezing, hugging, your low belly back towards your spine a little. Using the strength of your upper back to open your chest. Nice. Take another breath in as you exhale, left hand comes down to your hip, book, block, or floor. And then right arm comes up and over. Deep side body stretch. And your next inhale, start to come back up to center. As you exhale, right hand comes down to the floor or a book or block if floor feels too far away. Left arm peels open, finding your twist. And so again, it's tempting here to let front knee wing open to the side a little as we go. See if you can keep pressing into the space below your big toe. Use the strength to hug your knee and your chest towards each other. But squeeze your low belly a little towards your spine, away from your inner thigh. So that again, the twist is really coming from your ribs. Take a few more deep breaths. Maybe you tuck your back toes under, reach back through that heel until knee lifts. Last three. Last two. And one. Releasing your left hand down, frame your front foot. So go ahead and take a moment. Squeeze your low belly, drop both thighs back into your hips slightly to square your hips, and then see if you can float your arms back, float your chest off your front thigh, and come into that half high lunge. Breathing here, pressing through your front heel. Don't forget about that. Three, two, one. On your inhale, up to your high lunge. Good, nice. And on your next exhale, open to your warrior two. Beautiful. So reach through your back fingers just as much as through your front. And even though fingers are reaching away, shoulder blades are still drawing towards your spine. 
and then sliding down towards your hips and wrapping slightly towards your front ribs. Good. And even though you're sealing through the outer edge of your back foot, draw the inner thigh and the back leg up into your hips slightly. Beautiful. Flip your front palm up, inhale, reverse your warrior. Let that front thigh keep taking some of your weight. If it gets really tired, you can come out of it a little bit. But don't forget that ideal world, we're working towards parallel. Paralleling the thigh with the ground, I mean. Take one more nice full breath in. As you exhale, windmill your hands down to your mat. Step back, flow through your vinyasa. Take a nice full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale to lift your right leg. Exhale, step your foot forward. Spin your back foot flat at an angle, rise to warrior one. As you exhale, bring your hands to your low back. Either interlace your fingers and draw your knuckles down, or again, if interlacing your fingers is too much for your shoulders, use a scarf, strap, towel, cloth, or um, belt. Open through your chest here. And so the opening happens by moving armpits back towards your spine, sliding shoulder blades towards your hips. And then letting the shoulder blades, that bottom tip of the shoulder blades, wrap slightly towards the front of your ribs. Take another nice full breath in. Now as you exhale, start to hinge here, keeping the opening through your chest, just letting the top of your head start to melt down towards your front big toe. Sometimes hips wanna to open towards the long edge of your mat. See if you can take your front thigh, draw it back into your hip just a little. Help square your hips. Nice. Take another nice deep breath in. Now as you exhale, go ahead and release your hands down. Start to walk your hands over to the left a little, trying to keep your legs as they are as best you can. Good. And breathe here into a part of your hip you may not stretch very often. <laughs> so this might feel pretty challenging. And start to walk your hands back to center. Press through your feet, inhale, rise back up to warrior one. Exhale, open to your warrior two. Let's go ahead and come out of that front thigh a little bit, straighten through your front knee. As you inhale, reach up and back, reverse triangle. So again, you don't want that back hip kind of cocked up towards your ear. You wanna let your tailbone move between your feet, almost more like it was pointing towards your front heel. Good. Take another nice deep breath in. As you exhale, keep your legs straight if you can. So even though they're straight, you're not locking out your knees, you're drawing your thighs back up into your hips. So there's pressing, but also lifting. As you exhale, hinge and reach, eventually tipping your little teapot to come into Mukhita Trikonasana, triangle pose. And check in if your bottom set of ribs feel like they're kind of crunching into each other, see if you can take your right hip crease Move it back towards that short back edge of your mat so you can lengthen your bottom set of ribs. Good. And you can stay right here or maybe you come towards a half moon, right hand coming forward on the floor. If the floor feels too far away, bring your hand to a block or a book or use the strength of your core to float that bottom hand off the ground, breathe, maybe wobble and fall. Last three, last two, and one, soften your standing knees, step back to your triangle, inhale, up to stand. 
Turn your right toes in, face the long edge of your mat, wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, find that nice opening across your chest. And as you exhale, keep your chest open, but bow forward. Eventually, hands can come down to a book, block, or the floor. And then if you need any small movements, kind of shifting your weight a little to one foot and then the other, just to kind of settle a little deeper into your hips and hamstrings, you can always do that. You don't want to sink all your weight back to your heels. You want to have your weight even between the heels and toes of both feet. And maybe your knees are soft here. If that helps you lengthen the space where back of your legs meet your bottom, it's worth it. Good. And on your next inhale, lift halfway up. As you exhale, turn your left toes towards the back corner of your mat. Start to bend into that left knee. Coming into Skandasana side lunge. So I'm pretty open. My Skandasana is fairly easy. For some of you, your Skandasana might be way up here or even here. And you can either keep sealing through the outer edge of the foot on the straight leg, or you can roll heel down, toes up. Beautiful. Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, you can bring your palms together at heart center. Just make sure that as you do that, you're still using some of the strength of drawing both thighs back up in to your hips so that you're engaging pelvic floor and core to help support your joints. Good. Take one more full breath in. As you exhale, go ahead and come back to that center wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Now as you exhale, pivot back to face the top edge of your mat and step your back foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand. Exhale, draw your palms together at your heart center. Sink your hips towards that chair pose. Inhale to lift your right knee towards your chest again. And as you exhale, take your ankle over top of your knee, balancing figure four shape. So we've done a lot of playing with stabilizing through the hips in balance shapes. It's no different here. You want hips nice and square to help you find stability. And then maybe you can start to take the shape deeper, finding a deeper stretch up to you. Honor your body and where it is. And breathe. Good, yeah. Maybe you're even starting to find the space to hinge, hooking elbows into your shin or even bringing hands down to the floor. And if flying half pigeon is something you do, you can do that. I will not be doing that today. <laughs> Good. So slowly start to rise back up, unwinding your legs, coming back to stand. Ooh, inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. As you exhale, bow forward. Inhale, flat back. And then exhale, plant your hands, step or float back, flowing through your vinyasa, the one that's right for your shoulders. Meeting us in down dog. Take a nice full breath in. And a nice full breath out. Inhale to lift your left leg. As you exhale, step your foot forward. Back foot pivots to an angle. Rise to your warrior one. Good, so in warrior one, drawing both thighs back into your hips is gonna help you bring your hips towards square just a little bit. Keep lengthening out of your low back. On your next exhale, bring your hands behind you either interlacing your fingers or using that towel or scarf or belt or strap. Find the opening here. Few breaths to find the opening, really letting armpits soften back towards your spine, letting shoulder blades slide towards your hips. Those bottom tips of your shoulder blades start to wrap just slightly towards the front of your ribs. Take another nice full breath in. And as you exhale, keep the opening through your chest. Start to hinge forward. 
coming towards top of your head towards your front big toe. And breathe here, thighs drawing back into your hips slightly. So I'll bring your hips towards square. Don't forget to press through your front heel. Take one more full breath in. As you exhale, release any bind, hands come down. And then keep your legs as they are. If you can, start to walk your hands over to the right a little and breathe here. Good. Yeah. You bowed your chest a lot as you inhale, start to lift it. As you exhale, start to unwind back to the front of your mat. Inhale, press through your feet, rise up to warrior one. As you exhale, open to warrior two. We'll give the front thigh a break, straighten through it. Inhale, reach up and back, reverse triangle. Again, letting your tailbone not reach back towards your back heel, but start to shift so that the weight is even, not just between your feet, but also between your legs. Good. Take another nice full breath in. As you exhale, come back up. Now reach fingertips towards that top edge of your mat. Hips are gonna shift back again, so that now tailbone is once again pointing towards your back heel. And then start to when you're ready, ground your hand on your shin, maybe a block or the floor, or even your thigh if shin feels too far away. Beautiful. Yeah, and you don't wanna collapse your chest kind of towards your back leg. You wanna keep pressing your shoulder blades towards the long edge of your mat you can't see. Stacking your upper body over your front thigh. Nice. Take a few more breaths. And then stay here or come towards your half moon. And you wanna make sure your front hand isn't too close to your front foot. Give your bottom set of ribs some space to lengthen. Balance is finding that spot between, good. Lengthening away from center and also hugging your strength back in. Take another nice full breath in. As you exhale, soften your standing knee. Step back to your triangle. Inhale up to stand. Left toes turn in. Another wide-legged forward fold facing the long edge of your mat. Inhale to open here. You could take more of a shoulder opener, a chest opener variation, either grabbing opposite elbows behind you or trying to bring palms together, fingers pointing down or even up your spine for more challenge. Find the opening through your chest and then bow forward. And if it's too much once you've bowed, keep your hands behind you. You can always release them down. If it feels good to take a twist here, you can do that. Breathe wherever you are. Yeah, switching sides if you're in something one-sided and you haven't yet, look at twist. Now on your next inhale, coming back to center if you're twisting, find a long spine and as you exhale, turn right toes towards the back corner of your mat and start to bend into that right knee. So we're taking Skandasana on the other side. And so again, you can be higher if you need to. You can seal through the outer edge of your straight leg foot or roll heel down, toes up. Just make sure there's a sense of lifting still happening a little through the pelvic floor and core to support the joints of your hips and your knees as you stretch.
and steady breath. One more full breath in. As you exhale, start to come back to your wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, pivot back to face the top edge of your mat. Step back. Nope, step up. <laughs> Knew I was gonna forget something. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, rise all the way up. As you exhale, bring your palms together at heart center. Start to sink your hips towards your chair pose. This time, left knee draws towards your chest. As you exhale, bring left ankle over top of right knee. Take a moment again to engage your low belly, to slide your shoulder blades towards your hips and then wrap those bottom points slightly towards the front of your ribs, so upper back and core are integrating and supporting you. And then start to find the depth of the stretch that's right for you. And maybe you wobble. Maybe you stay right here. Maybe you can even hinge a little deeper. Just make sure you are breathing wherever you are. And if you played with that flying half pigeon on the first side, you can do that here. Take another nice full breath in. Exhale it out. Inhale to rise back up and exhale to unwind your legs. Shake them out a little. Inhale to reach your arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, bow here. Inhale, flat back. And then exhale, toe heel your feet wide. Toes out further than your heels. Sink your hips to your malasana. Yoga squat. So in your squat, if you need some support, you can take a block or a book or something underneath your hips. If that doesn't work, you can always come to a seat and work the opening of your knees. If you would like to play with crow pose or baby crows, baby crow or some other flying variation here, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. Breathe wherever you are. Mm. Big toes to touch if you're playing with your fro. Good, keep scooping your armpits towards your spine a little. Keep integrating that upper back strength with your core nice. Take another nice full breath in. And then as you exhale, you're going to come to a seat. <sighs> Super fancy transition. <laughs> So take your feet nice and wide and just drop both knees to one side for a few breaths and then the other. And then coming back to center, I'm gonna go ahead and tuck your left heel in, come to a seat, tucking your left heel in towards your hips knee bent out to the side. And then you're actually gonna see if you can reach for your right foot. This is also where maybe a belt or scarf or towel or strap could come in handy. And you're gonna keep the right knee bent to start and lift it up. And so as you lift that right foot up, make sure shoulders aren't, you know, you're not collapsing through your chest and reaching. You wanna keep drawing armpits towards your spine. You wanna keep sliding shoulder blades towards your hips. And then perhaps you can even start to straighten your knee. Maybe you can even start to try and drop your forehead towards your shin. Breathe wherever you are. Don't roll back too far back. You want to keep your weight towards your sits bones, which is more forward in your pelvis.
and then you can stay right here. Perhaps you switch so that your left hand is on the outer edge of the lifted foot, and you're gonna take a twist here, right arm and ground behind you, or keep reaching back. And so your chest is moving towards that lifted thigh. And then start to come back to center. And again, you can either stay here or bend your knee and start to thread your right shoulder underneath your right knee. And so maybe it's enough to keep the knee bent and just try and thread the shoulder underneath. Maybe you can start to play with straightening that leg and turning your gaze up under your left armpit towards the ceiling. Find what's right for you and breathe. Just three. Good. Just two. And one. Beautiful. Slowly release it down. Windshield wiper your knees. Yeah. And we're going to switch sides. So come back sitting up forward more towards where back of your legs meet your bottom and towards your tailbone. Tuck your right heel in towards your pelvis. And go ahead and either bring your hands to your foot or once again, take your strap, belt, towel, scarf, whatever you got. And that's great if you feel like your legs are just too long for your arms. <laughs> it's usually a sign that our arms could use a little help. Because again, it's not about reaching if it costs you, if it makes your back round like this. You want to be able to keep your chest nice and lifted and open as best you can. And so knee can stay bent or you can start to straighten it. You can even play with drawing your forehead towards your shin. Last three. Two. And one, we're gonna take the twist here. So right hand comes to the outer edge of your left foot. And you're gonna open your chest and gaze the direction of that lifted leg. And either left hand can stay reaching back or can ground behind you. Keep pressing your lifted foot into your hand and resisting that by drawing shoulder blade towards your spine to help you find the balance and the strength as well as the openness and the shape. All right, take one more nice full breath in. As you exhale, come back to center. Go ahead and bend that lifted knee. Start to thread your left shoulder underneath your knee. Hand or towel or strap and come to your foot. And maybe it's enough just to stay right here. Maybe you start to try and straighten the leg, rolling this through your side body too so that your gaze turns up underneath your armpit. Good. And breathe here. And again, your foot's pressing into your hand or the strap or towel and you're resisting that by drawing that shoulder blade back into your, your midline. Take another nice full breath in. And as you exhale, gently release out. And wind your legs. Take, once again, those nice wide windshield wipers. You can even pause on one side. Take the outermost knee. So if knees are dropped to the left, it would be the left ankle and drop it, bring it on top of the right knee. You could even then come down onto your forearms if you feel like you'd like a little more in that shape. And then uncross and switch. And then gently uncross here. So go ahead and come down onto your forms if you aren't there already and come to sit on the backs of your hands, palms facing down. And see if you can imagine reaching your legs long, particularly down your inner thighs, 
and for your big toes. Then use the strength of your shoulder blades, your upper back, to float the front of your chest up towards the ceiling. Then as best you can, let your head soften. You wanna be able to breathe deeply here, opening through your chest, opening through your, the fronts of your shoulders. Five, four, three, two. Now maybe you stay here, maybe you even come towards fish pose. So your feet might walk back in towards your hips just a little, or your hips might slide underneath you just a little bit more. So the top of your head can start to reach back towards the mat. You're still lifting through your chest as best you can. And breathe. Last three. You can even take lion's breath, big breath into your nose, stick your tongue out, release to your jaw. Ah. Two. Ah. Last one. Ah. And then slowly come down onto your back, moving your hands. Draw both knees into your chest and circle your low back on the mat a few times, moving one direction and then the other. And then draw your knees into your chest. Take your happy baby. Feet coming nice and wide. Knees moving towards your armpits. If it's too much to grab onto your feet, grab calves or behind your thighs. Again, more important is that you want the back of your body to be able to relax towards the floor. So if to reach your feet, the back of your body lifts up and away, then don't reach for your feet. Take something a little easier. And relax here, maybe rocking side to side. Good. And then gently release, bring your knees back to center and send your legs long. Coming to your shape of final rest, your Shavasana. So whatever shape allows you to relax most completely. So maybe that's taking small pillows or a rolled up blanket beneath your knees, softening there. Maybe, yeah, your bolster, beautiful. If you don't have any of those things, you can always plant your feet on the mat and bring your knees more towards each other. Take a nice, breath in and as you exhale just release start to feel any kind of deeper breath you might have had soften Points for the back of your body, the ground. And see if you can melt into that space, that meeting point. Maybe as you melt, you even become aware that they're not as separate as we think they are. Back within and around each and everything, there's actually a silence and an emptiness. Let yourself float there in that silence and emptiness. Supported and relaxed.
And so in the silent space, maybe become more aware of your body, maybe bring your awareness to your breath again. Bring small movements into your fingers, your toes. Wrists and ankles. Just sensing without needing to look the floor, the ceiling, the four walls around you this time in this space. Maybe taking a nice big full body stretch. And then perhaps you make your way to one side of your body, just resting your head in your arms or in your sock, whatever is restful and restorative for you. Nurturing. And then from there, slowly feel your way up to your comfortable seat. And there, bringing your palms to rest at your heart center, thumbs at the center of your chest. And so just pause for a moment of gratitude for your body, for this ancient wisdom tradition that is yoga for all the yogis who have come before and for all those who will come after. And then from that place of gratitude, we bow and honor the light that exists within each one of us. I see you, I honor you. Thank you. So for those who are tuning in later, donations are always welcome to help me keep providing materials and links should be around where you find this recording. Thank you for joining me, Ashley. Thanks for agreeing to be recorded.